this is Russell Clay here. You can find me on Twitter at Russell J. Clay. Taking a look at some week nine salary exploitation. Obviously, this is where we, uh, you know, on Monday afternoon when the slates first come out, take a look at, you know, where where the exploitation is. I have DraftKings browser open. Uh, I did do the article for DraftKings FanDuel and Fantasy Draft. So if you want to check out that article, head over to DailyFantasyCafe.com and check that out there. Uh, however, um, since we're on DraftKings, you know, let's let's take a look here. So uh, a little different format this week. We have Screencast-O-Matic. You know, I am uh, going to be going to be going through this on the site so that you actually have a visual this week. So hopefully that's something you guys enjoy. Uh, and my face is smaller, which is getting uh, paler as we speak. Uh, so this is a good thing for you guys as well. Uh, starting off, you know, week 11, we, or week, week eight was much more about, uh, bye weeks than anything else. We get a little bit of reprieve here. Um, I actually kind of like this slate a lot more, especially because we have the Minnesota Vikings back again. Uh, a lot of these defenses are really falling apart here mid season. So, um, something to note, uh, I will say, you know, for quarterback, before we get into, um, the values, I, I love Rodgers. I love Luck. Um, I love Breeze. I, I think those three are really the ones you want to focus on. Um, and we'll get into Dante Moncrief and Devontae Adams, but I think those are, are other reasons why you should be interested in in Rodgers and Luck. So I, I think that's that's definitely a direction to go. And game stacking that, that game, which should be an absolute shootout, is something I would... Uh, highly suggest um, but getting into the values here we're moving down moving down uh, moving all the way down Sam Bradford you know against this Lions secondary is just they're terrible um, and you know they've been giving up bad weeks pretty consistently uh, every week, you know, making us think that players are better than they are. Sam Bradford at the bare men. I mean, I know we haven't seen Stefan Diggs at what, you know, we saw early in the season for a while. He's obviously been hampered a little bit, uh, but I think he gets back in action. This is Monday, so we haven't seen the Monday night game. I'm guessing he kind of gets back into form this week uh, and carries that into next week. You know, if not, I kind of hope he does bad tonight so that, uh, I can get him at low ownership this week. Cordero Patterson in the mix. Adam Thielen, uh, you know, the running game kind of falling apart there with McKinnon getting hurt. So I, I think Bradford's interesting. He's faced a few tough defenses of late uh, and this Lions uh, secondary. You know, when, when they give up points to Case Keenum, uh, that's when you know things things are going haywire. So I love Sam Bradford. I think that's a great play at 5K. I, it's going to be tough to get away from that one, honestly. Uh, but if you do want to get away from that one, but you want to stick with a lower range, um, I, I looked at Ryan Tannehill for a second here, and uh, at the end of the day, um, Devontae Parker and his role is too inconsistent for me. I like targeting that Jets secondary, but I would have liked to target it with Devontae Parker. With his role in question, I'm not sure how high upside Tannehill has. I think I'd rather just get my exposure through Landry. Uh, Josh McCown's the one I want to focus on here, though. Dallas is an okay secondary. I don't think they're bad by any means. Um, but with Morris Claiborne potentially being hurt for a while, that's going to sting. Uh, Corey Coleman coming back, cleared for practice. If he plays this week, I think McCown's definitely in play. You just looked at him with uh, you know, Terrell Pryor last week. They obviously have a good rapport. Uh, Cody Kessler might play if he does, obviously, null and void here. Uh, but, you know, if he doesn't, I, I think you're looking at McCown as, as a very viable option. And, you know, stack them with Zeke. Love Zeke this week. You know, obviously, if he's not suspended, you're playing him against the Browns. I don't care what the price is. So, fire away there. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, though, I, I do like these options up here. So, Rogers, Luck, Breeze, um, 
you know, Roethlisberger potentially coming back. I, I think that's where you want to head there. Uh, running back, you know, it's kind of tough this week. As with last week, I didn't really feel good about paying down for anyone other than Devontae Booker. Uh, Booker, once again, 6400 Not the pay down anymore, obviously, but you still like that price, especially compared to the high-end options. I like Zeke Elliott as the top option, but obviously he's not an exploitation of any sort, um, but you want to pay up for him. As far as Jay Ajayi, he's tough to get a read on. Uh, obviously, back-to-back 200 rushing yard games. Jets, def- Jets run defense is good. Um, maybe we start to see... You know, the Dolphins extend his role to the passing game. You know, he was highly productive at Boise State out of the backfield as a receiver. Uh, I would highly suggest they start using him in that facet of the game because I think he'd be effective in that sense. But, you know, generally speaking, uh, 25 carries against the Jets isn't what it is, you know, against some other teams. So that kind of limits his upside at 6K. Um, but I think there is still upside to exploit there. Uh, Terrence West is the guy I'm kind of looking at, 4,700. Um, obviously, Kenneth Dixon there obviously didn't get a ton of rushes against that Jets defense that I was talking about. Uh, they are really strong and shouldn't shouldn't be one that you indict someone on. You know, like team players have bad games against the Jets. Not something you should, you know, cast them out for. Obviously, we've seen the usage, the touchdowns we love uh, for West. Um, Kenneth Dixon is there, but I'm not worried. 4,700 against this Pittsburgh defense. Uh, I, I think this is an interesting move. If you want to go Roethlisberger and Brown, I think he's a nice guy to fit in there. Um and, I mean, other than that, I don't think you're really looking at many Ravens. So I think this is your your chance to get Ravens exposure. Um, but, you know, other than that, we like what Theo Riddick's doing, uh, but tough against that Minnesota D. Mark Ingram, I mean, who knows what to think with that benching. That was bizarre uh, fumble, but Tim Hightower looking like he's going to make that complicated. I still think both of them are worth throwing in there as tournament plays. But generally speaking, uh, I'm going to hedge at least off that. It is juicy matchup. I think eventually you're going to get some shares of Ingram. But, I mean, let's read the tea leaves as the week uh, unfolds here and see what they have to say because that's kind of a tough situation. (laughs) They literally benched him. Six snaps last game. That's really awkward. Uh, Next up, wide receivers. So... Dante Moncrief, obviously coming back from the injury, 5,800, not quite the value he was last week at um, at 5,400, but 58 still cheap against this this Packers secondary. I think he could absolutely go off. Um, had a 40-yard touchdown called back uh, last week against the Chiefs. I, I think he's a great guy this week to really look at uh, and and really start you know, your cash game lineup construction with. Uh, and who knows with T.Y. Hilton, you know, starting to get banged up here. They, they've they ran a lot of miles on his tires early this season, um, giving him a lot of targets. Great talent. Um, I worry about him holding up over the season, though. You know, if he's good to go, he's good to go. But uh, I like Moncrief this week quite a bit. You know, Devontae Adams... <sighs> Third year break, third year breakout, folks. Uh, I mean, this is why we don't give up on second round picks after you know two years. Obviously, had had a rough second year there, where he was counted on to basically be the the second you know outside the the top option outside and second option in the passing game behind Randall Cobb. Now that Jordy Nelson's back, order is restored. And Adams is just getting a ton of work. Uh, they're using him out of the backfield as sort of in running backs type like plays. Like he runs out of the backfield and does those little outs that that running backs do. Um, kind of like what they were doing with Ty Montgomery. If Montgomery's back, they're not going to be running that. But based on week seven when Montgomery was in, Adams going to get pelted with targets either way. Rogers getting hot this. Colts secondary, other than Vontae Davis, is horrible. Uh, 5,900, not not a problem at all. I'm, I'm in, especially on DK. Uh, FanDuel, you know, pretty much the same situation. He's been catching touchdowns as well. 
uh, I, I think you fire away there. Uh, last guy, you know, <laughs> uh, where is he? There he is. Uh, Jeremy Curley and Torrey Smith against the Saints. I mean, that's that's a tough, tough one to figure with Kaepernick there. Uh, Curley still getting targets, but hasn't quite found the effectiveness. You know, 27 yards in the last two weeks on on 12 targets. That's certainly not what you're looking for. But I just think they're going to continue to go to him. They're going to continue to you know run Chip Kelly's system while uh, they have slowed it down. Um, with Carlos Hyde kind of hampered. Uh, they need the short passing game to be there against the Saints team. Curly's going to be able to figure things out. Uh, if he gets five to seven targets, I can definitely see him hitting value at 4K. You know, I, I just think this is a, a pretty straightforward one. Um, obviously not the min value uh, we, we liked for the first few weeks of the season, but Generally speaking, you're not going to get a guy um, against the Saints for 4K that's going to get seven targets um, very often. So I think you can expect five to seven targets, you know, maybe stack him with Kaepernick. I, I, I don't know. But I, I think overall, I, overall, you can target the Saints defense with these 49ers, even though we don't necessarily like the 49ers skill position players. Jeremy Curley, solid slot player. You know, he's no Jamison Crowder, uh, but he made his living with the Jets, as you see the Jets jersey there for quite a few years. Stand out at TCU. Um, has weird tattoos on his neck, so you know he's good. Uh, anyhow, uh, moving on. Um, I, I think those are the main guys I'm looking at here. Um, you know, it's going to be tough to get away from Jarvis Landry at 71 as well against the Jets. They just don't have anyone to guard him. Um, so beyond that, though, yeah, I think that's that's good for value there. I, I don't think you necessarily need to, you know, jump all the way down. Uh, so keep that in mind. Tight end, it's a tough one. Uh, no, C.J. Fedorowicz, my fave, my boo, my man, catching touchdowns, getting seven targets a week, uh, bye week this week. So not going to be there for us. Um, as far as this group, um, Eric Ebron obviously made the comeback. I'm not buying him against the the Vikings. I think we wait another week, maybe look to him uh, the week after this. Um, Antonio Gates, really limited player at this stage of his career. I know he caught a touchdown last week, but he's just so limited as a player. I mean, you, you see that yards per catch, that represents usage. Uh, they're really dumping it off to him. Hunter Henry is the guy there. You hope they kind of get uh, Hunter Henry more involved than they did last week. Obviously hampered by an injury. We saw what he did when he was healthy. Um, they're hiding that injury. He's hurt. Uh, I'd stay away from him for now. Uh, as far as that goes, though, we're going to look at a, a Wisconsin alum, former Wisconsin Badger Lance Kendricks, carried their offense for years. Um, I'm, I'm looking at Lance here. You know, he's been getting a ton of targets. I, I, look at this. Um, over the last, you know, four weeks, he's had seven or more targets three times. So you look at that week, he had the, the receiving touchdown against Detroit. Obviously that was a good matchup. There is some concern about Carolina's defense showing up last week at home. They are on the road, but they could be, uh, looking better, uh, and looking more like the Carolina defense we remember from last year. Uh, but Kendricks, I mean, he's going to get those targets just because Case Keenum is there. They need a dump off option. Uh, Britain, Br Kenny Britton, Brian Quick are, are good options. Tavon option is a solid option out of the backfield and on screens. Um, <coughs> Kendricks is kind of like that third down guy they use in that offense. Um, <coughs> Third and seven, third and six, they're looking to Kendricks on those dump offs. Um, I think he's certainly viable um, at his 2900 price. He's kind of that guy we've been looking at. You know, the last four or five weeks, we found one or two guys that are, um, you know, values at that range. Fedorowicz, Hunter Henry for a few weeks. Um, I think he could be that guy this week. 
Uh, as far as another value, I, I think Kobe Fleener's the value. Uh, I know he's splitting, splitting snaps with Josh Hill. I don't care. Um, they're going to get him his targets. And in good matchups, he's going to flourish. Uh, as we saw against Carolina, as we saw against Atlanta, you know, in matchups like that, uh, and we're looking at San Francisco, this is a good matchup for him. Uh, 3,400, I, I expect this to be a big week for him. And by expect, I mean I don't expect anything slightly um, consistent from Kobe Fleener. But, you know, you you look at these box scores – uh two games two games over 25 you know the rest all under seven or all under eight um that's gonna kind of be how it goes for him michael thomas has asserted himself as the second option in that passing game willie sneed is the third option so that can only mean uh fleener is the fourth because cooks is not uh falling off there either um, so that's going to be inconsistent. That's just going to be the way it is. He is the Devery Henderson. Um, good matchups. You fire away with him. I, I like it. 3,400 could get a nice advantage, um, on that mid range. You can look at Jack Doyle if Dwayne Allen's out again. Um, I would kind of caution, uh, using Travis Kelsey this week, you know, obviously had the big week last week, but when you look at those previous three weeks, um, not much doing in terms of targets. So I, I would take a break maybe um, from Kelsey if you used him last week and don't get too excited, you know, if you if you didn't and, and want to get him in a lineup. Uh, one guy I'll mention, you know, Vance McDonald's. We're getting deeper here. This is more of a, a dynasty waiver wire type deal. But Vance McDonald, I mean, Six targets last game. I think that's important. His one went for 24. Obviously had the few big plays early in the season. Uh, that 75-yard touchdown against Carolina and that receiving touchdown against L.A. Uh, you know, kind of had a few down weeks with injuries. Missed a few weeks, week four and five. They've been working him back in. I think he's a main option in this passing game. If you're not going to go Jeremy Curley, uh, maybe go Vance McDonald. I, I think that's an interesting move for sure. Um, if you want to get real different here, uh, as far as the defenses, I joked around in the article. Um, I put Minnesota, uh, -huh. Minnesota is the highest price defense. Um, but generally speaking, I mean, I'm going to fire away with them again at 4,000 is a value to me for the Vikings. I don't care. Um, I, I think they are sound in every facet. They create turnovers. They score tons of points. Um, they haven't been under eight fantasy points this week. That's what you're looking for in tournaments. You're looking, you can't get killed by your defense. You can't get two points from your defense and, tr and expect to win a tournament. Uh, this is the move. Um, if you want to go for a cash sense, for a high floor sense, um, then that's the move. I think you can go... Uh, with the Panthers here against the Rams, obviously you want to target Case Keenum. But uh, overall, yeah, I, I think we're looking at the Panthers here um, as as sort of a nice value at 34. Um, as I mentioned, they turned it on last week. Uh, I think you can play Lance Kendricks and not really worry about the Panthers' defense in terms of value. You know, he can get his six catches for 50 yards and – and the Panthers can still get a defensive touchdown. So don't be afraid to use those guys together. Uh, as far as, you know, the value here, there's just too many leaks in these boats for me to trust any of them. Uh, you know, we kind of saw a lot of that last week. These are just rough. Uh, I mean, maybe we can go with the Titans. Uh, they've looked pretty decent early in the season. Tough to trust them against... San Diego, though, because they just pass the ball and pass the ball and pass the ball. Uh, other than that, though, I mean, I think you want to keep it up here. I know this is salary exploitation, but I, I think we're moving with Panthers, Vikings, you know. Maybe get sneaky with the Broncos coming off a big game. Oakland coming off a huge game. Might be a sneaky game for the Broncos. Uh, as always, you know, thanks for tuning in. If you want to check this out, um, uh, the article, you know, go to YouTube. Or, or go to dailyfantasycafe.com and, and read that there. You know, if you like what 
I'm doing here and what Jason Gilbo is doing and, and all of us are doing on the channel. Give us a like and subscribe. And as always, good luck this week. See you guys in week 10.